The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Tuesday morning, just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We pick up the trading day, opening bell in about 24 minutes from right now. And you got a pretty calm market, all things considered. S&Ps right now off by about six points, trading right now at 43.77. We were as low as about 43.66 in the overnight session. You see a little bit of an acceleration. We just gained about 10, almost 15 points in the last two hours or so, getting back to almost flat territory. NASDAQ 100, we're positive by 13 points right now trading at 15,246 uh, Nasdaq on a seven day winning streak Dow negative by 79 points right now 34,083 you got the Russell off by five at 1740 crude how about under $80 crude trading with a 78 handle within the last hour or so right now we're trading at $79 on the dot off of buck 82 in the price of crude. How about those gas prices coming down recently, man? Um, making a drive, talked about it yesterday, showed some pictures of last week in the Great Smoky Mountains, Gatlinburg, Tennessee. About a 10 and a half hour ride from Florida, about 750 miles, doing it both ways in an SUV. I put some gas miles on there. And yeah, those gas pipes couldn't, gas pumps couldn't help but pay attention in terms of the prices at those pumps. Looks like it might can keep going that way for at least right now as you got crude. Under $79 this morning. Gold off 17 bucks. How about that pullback in gold? Was that 1995 just yesterday, man? It's been a one-way trip. We're trading right now at 1971. You made it as low as 1962. The spike on Friday on the jobs number up to 2010. We got to talk about notes and bonds, right? A little bit of higher price, lower yield coming at you. You get the 10-year right now at about 4.62%. The 10-year up by nine ticks at 107.27. You get the 30-year up by 25 ticks. Now, we've been talking a lot about the 10-year. We spent some time on it on yesterday's program. Keep your eye on that channel line. Because it comes back to that upper boundary line and the channel line. That's where potentially I'd be looking for a bounce. If you get a bounce there, what's that going to mean? If you get a bounce, that's going to be talking about higher prices and lower yields. And maybe that's what the market's waiting for. A little bit of... Um, uncertainty would probably be the best word right now in terms of where yields are going to go. I'm sure you may have seen, my dad was talking about it, right? Uh, funds. Funds were at record shorts at the lows when you got that acceleration, man. So everybody a little uncertain of what's going on right now. The market digesting a bit, the gains that we had. I mean, you back this up on a 10-day, 10 10-minute 10 chart from 105.15 up to 108.25 in the span of about six trading days. From two weeks ago on Thursday, October 26th. And is that the low? Let's go back 20 days. Yeah, pretty much. I'm taking the October 20, what day? October 26th, that's the day we're looking at. So we were a little bit lower the prior week of October 19th, but you're talking about a move. Yeah, from two weeks ago Thursday, of 105 and change up more than three points so market digesting that a bit nonetheless look for a possible rechallenge of that upper boundary line and where is that on the chart about 10705 something like that almost a full point below where we're trading at right now now you got to get over to the dollar index you see some action in gold right you see some action in crude boy you talk about what a difference a week can make let's put it on a 10 day 10 minute chart there's Friday's action. You dive down to a low of a 104 handle. And just like that, the dollar trading higher. Pretty remarkable how the dollar and even yields almost getting back to where we were on Friday. Now, a far cry from where we were from Chairman Powell, though. So there's two things on this chart I wanted to talk about to kick off the program. OK, keeping track of what this market is paying attention to right now. Let's first go to yields. OK, now. Yields. For Chairman Powell's press conference, I'm zooming in on last Wednesday's action. There's 8.30, there's 10 o'clock, there's your 2 o'clock volatility, and there's your 2.30 press conference where you finally get an acceleration higher in the yields. That is last Wednesday, okay? 
Friday, things really started accelerating on the heels of, back this out, the jobs number. But what I wanted to bring up here is that the market yesterday gave up the entire acceleration on the jobs number, but it hasn't given up anything in terms of what we were doing on the Fed day, okay? Even if you take where we were at about 2 o'clock, 106.23, the market's still a full point higher. Still a full point higher on the tenure. That's pointing to lower yields, right? Boy, hear Chairman Powell's words. When I heard him talking about the risks of hiking outweighing the risks of runaway inflation, it seemed like that was something that he was uh, well aware that the market would pay attention to. And just put yourself in his position. He now believes, and if his assumption is true, then it's a reasonable position. We all make assumptions, right? The Fed is making many assumptions in their effort to live by their mandate, which is full employment and stable prices. For the longest time on their hiking cycle, they had been most worried about stability in prices because we had full employment, man, right? We had the jolts number at 11, 12 million. We had an unemployment number still in the threes. We still have those, okay? But we had inflation raging, and the risk was always not doing enough. The chairman's words, the risk was not doing enough that inflation would rage. His words, they believe that they are now in a very restrictive policy, okay? They believe that five and a quarter to 5.5% is restricting economic growth, which in theory should bring down inflation because you're bringing down growth. Doesn't mean it always happens instantaneously. Doesn't mean it always happens, but there's definitely legs. But if that assumption is true, and you have to put yourself in Chairman Powell's position because he's making that assumption, so he believes it's true, and if he believes it's true that they are in a restrictive policy rate that is going to, over time, even with some lag, bring down inflation as it has from the peak, then what's the rush? What's the rush in hiking again? We would have to see some pretty substantial data, I think, to have them hike again on the heels of Friday's job number. They're always going to be looking at the totality of the data coming in, and they're now in the position that they believe that with time on their side, as long as things don't get too out of whack with inflation, which it doesn't seem that it is, at least as of the data right now, with time on their side, they believe they're in a restrictive rate policy. And hiking from this point forward poses more risks to full employment, which is one of their mandates, than the risks of not hiking poses to runaway inflation. And the market paid attention to that, and I'm looking for a possible retest here. Maybe you don't get it. Maybe this thing just breaks away and yields drop lower. Uh, but we will find out and look to that data. But they are going to err on the side, if possible, of not hiking. And maybe that's it, you know. And remember that they really can't tell you they're done hiking until they're well past the point that the market can price that in because the moment that they the moment the gig is up the moment their hand is revealed to bring in some poker terms out there well the tightening that they've done actually gets untightened right yields will drop that will actually make things unrestricted so that can't happen right they need the market to be unaware if they may hike to keep it just where it is right now in a restrictive rate policy but nonetheless man we got yields at about 4.62. We'll talk a little bit of Fed speak when we get back. We'll talk to our man Kevin Hinks as well. Stay tuned, folks. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&P futures negative by just two points right now, trading at 43.81. NASDAQ 100 makes it into the positive by 35 points. To talk about some of the action, let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hicks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time, fast market from the Schwab Network right here on Tiger TV with your host, Kevin Hicks, Tom White, the outstanding team at the Schwab Network. They walk you through hypothetical setups, folks. They're usually talking about three trades during every program, all of them talking about options and all of them talking about defined risk. And boy, Kevin, where do we kick things off, man? I was away last week. We haven't chatted in a while. We got the Fed. We got the jobs number. And uh, we got potential with yields pulling back a bit. Good morning, Kevin. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Here's one place to start. A week ago Friday, we touched 4103 on the S&P 500. And now we find ourselves trading around 4365. And now we've, we, we've come up through the 200-day moving average. Now we're, we, we closed yesterday through the 50-day moving average, Tommy. So if you're a bull in the, in, in the S&P 500 looking at these markets, you're feeling a little good about yourself right now. And now we've got a NASDAQ that started the morning overnight futures lower, and now it's up by about a third of a percent. And it's starting to drag the other indices higher here. So what looked like maybe a down open isn't looking so down right now, Tommy. Yeah, even as you're talking, NASDAQ 100 futures popping up almost by 50, and we might get S&P futures positive by the time I finish this sentence. Basically flat right now. I have the chart of the S&P futures up as you were talking about it, Kevin, and just uh, volatility, man, down and up. October 17th, we're above 4,400. You said it, October 27th. Uh, inching towards 4,100, and we're just right back to 4,400. I want to get your take, Kevin. You've talked about many times, we've talked to you, I've heard you talk about it on Fast Market, that the market may be able to handle these higher rates, right? That, that we've been used to lower rates for some time. It looks like it's handling them pretty well right now, considering we're still at, what, 4.62%, something like that on the 10-year. We have the S&P at 4,400. A lot of talk, of course, with Chairman Powell last week. I wanted to get your take on when you look at Chairman Powell, you look at the Fed. Nobody has the crystal ball, of course. But he had some, some rhetoric that, you know, they are at least looking to the fact that the, the risks of hiking and what that could do to the economy might begin to outweigh the risks of runaway inflation at this point. Are you looking at yields potentially to pull back, Kevin, or is this something when you're looking at equities that you're looking at them regardless of where yields are because you've, you've kind of 
set, at least when you talk about it, that equities may be okay regardless of where yields are, or do you think that you're looking for maybe a yield pullback for the, the market to head higher? I guess the question is, do you think the market can head higher if we stay at these yields, or is it kind of pricing in a little bit of a pullback on the heels of, of Chairman Powell? Remember, there's an old saying about winters in Chicago that if it goes to 10 zero for a week, it seems well, summer, right? And it seems really warm. Now, we're just and really I've the last seven years, but they're not his yield and the market rallying, Tommy, and the E-minis go positive as we're speaking uh, right now. So, yeah, I think, you know, the, the fact that yields have come down to 4.6, crude oil below $79. Raise your hand if you had that on your prognostication for the market with two wars going on in the world and, and crude oil can't hold $80 and Saudi Aramco's uh, earnings significantly lower than a year ago on how what they said lower prices and lower volume sold so yeah this is an so everything seems cheaper than it was why because it was higher and now all of them are have come down lower so yeah i think absolutely this market can find comfort or be very comfortable with rates around 4.6 percent i mean and it is pretty cool you finally get that pullback because you've talked about it as well. Market, maybe, a, and I'm not putting words in your mouth, Kevin, but something to the degree, I think, you know, it might be okay with, with rising yields, but boy, the pace that we got that acceleration up to 5%, so maybe a little bit of easing as we pull back to 4.6, uh, something like that. Market, resiliently strong, man, at 4,400. What did you think of the Apple earnings, Kevin, last week? I didn't get a chance to chat with you. Pretty remarkable that it shakes it all off. And we're now above where we were coming into those earnings after a spike lower. Uh, Apple this morning trading at about 179. I think there was a couple things in that earnings call that you could find some comfort in, which was Apple is projecting fourth quarter earnings to be flat for to a year ago, right? But there was 14 weeks in the fourth quarter a year ago, and only 13 weeks this year, and that week accounts for about 7% of what it was. So I think, that, you know, if you looked into the numbers in Apple and looked at the guidance going forward, it wasn't as bad as we originally thought. So because flat numbers with one less week is pretty solid, if you ask me. So I think, yeah, people saw Apple's weakness and their overall cash position and thought, boy, this is still a very healthy company, Tommy. And the chart agrees, man. Off of the highs, of course, of 198, but you back things up in terms of where the market peaked out coming into 2022, and you're basically right back at those prices before you had that whole market pullback with the Fed hiking cycle. With that in mind, Kevin, we still got some companies coming out with their earnings this week. Do you guys have some equities that you're talking about on Fast Market coming up at 12 today? Three really good names today all coming out with their earnings, Tommy. In the first segment, we'll look at Roblox. The um, get the game here you know, where, where you're allowed to make your own games, basically. Uh, like Foley will do a presentation on Rivian and all things EVs, R Rivian coming out with earnings. And then in the final segment, we'll do Oxy Petroleum coming out with earnings. Um, and so what does Oxy Petroleum do with Saudi Aramco's miss and the overall oil market now below $80? So, yeah, we got some good topics to talk about today, Tommy. Boy, and I had my charts on a three-year weekly, Kevin, as um, I was jumping through some of those equities. And boy, Roblox, you take a look. And I tell you, we play uh, the kids in my household, Kevin. They like Roblox. They like Minecraft, I think it is. Minecraft, I think it's a private company. Roblox, not the case, man. Public, well off the highs of 141. We're trading at 33.85. Kevin, I appreciate the time, as always, on a busy morning. We look forward to the program, Fast Market at 12 today. And we'll talk to you tomorrow, man. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. You too. Folks, check it out. You heard it. Talking three great stocks, man. And yeah, Roblox. Uh, so Roblox and Minecraft, man. It's amazing. I was talking to the kids just yesterday saying, Do you, I'm going to date myself here. Do you remember SimCity, folks? Now, it's called Sims. They still got the game out. Um, 
Is it owned by Microsoft? Okay, even better. Uh, SimCity. Do you guys remember that? SimCity? I'm trying to remember. I was probably 14, 15, 16. Pretty cool. My dad was in, he was a travel agent at the time, so he has a travel agency. Maybe I was 12. Yeah, I had to be 12. I was, yeah, I was like 12 or 13. And we had, we had basically a LAN network because he had his office out of the garage. He had multiple computers with employees there. And it was the early stages where because he had an office in the home, we actually had a LAN network with multiple computers set up. And that was the first time that you could play games against each other almost online remotely by sitting at different computers. I mean, we do that now on our phone anytime we want. But I remember playing those games and, and realizing, you know, it's pretty amazing how that technology flies. Uh, but SimCity, almost like you're building as a kid, right? Either way, different games now. Roblox. All right, folks, s and is basically flat. We're coming back for the open. Stay tuned. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Apologies there. Had a little bit of a sneeze in the break. We got the S&Ps open up basically negative by one point right now. We'll call it flat. 43.84 NASDAQ 100 positive by 52 points. Check out the S&P on a weekly basis right now. First of all, how about that area of confluence, man? You know, quite a bounce. We got it. We were talking about it back at almost 4,400 when you got an acceleration. That area of confluence, okay, is the 618 
We'll do it up right now. Just put it on your charts, folks, because maybe it's an area we come back to, or maybe that was the test. It's the 618 of the one-way trip from March, the trend from March up to the highs of July, and that coincides with the spike low of 3502 up to those same highs of 4600 and change, bringing it to the 382. You combine the 382 and the 618, that gives you that area of confluence, which is about 4140 to 4200. Well, what'd you get to? 4122, within 18 points of the lower boundary line of that confluence area, you've now spiked to 4380. Excuse me, I bring it up though because on a daily basis, now that's why, excuse me, I wanted to put it on a weekly basis. Gotta get all these drawings, they get too confusing. Here, let me put that on a weekly, see if we open things up. Nope, still too much action. What I wanted to highlight, so there's the area of confluence that correlates, is man, what a weekly acceleration we had. That's quite a weekly bar. The thing to remember though, is if you just go back to the the accelerations we've had even in pullbacks folks you boy you get some steep accelerations and what i'm in terms of look at some of the weekly bars march of 2022 sticks out the most now that was a time like none other because that was when the fed began their hiking cycle right you traded lower from 4800 down to 4200 the head the fed began their hiking cycle you got a relief rally before the market really fell out of bed just be aware that even on strong weeks like that, okay, and listen, I'm talking about that maybe we get the reversal of yields, okay, we're at 107.30, I don't even know if we're going to get the pullback, man, because we're seeing higher prices right now, you got to make it to that bar to get a test of that line, and this is kind of tying in, if you were listening to the program yesterday, I spent uh, part of the program talking about the mentality of when risking money and potentially shifting how you think about things and the way I like to look at it in one aspect is you look at something and say, am I, am I losing money by not making that trade? Because that's the way you should look at it. Is it a scenario where in the long run, I think I'm missing out on profits by not putting money at risk right now versus saying to yourself, do I have a shot at profit to put some money at risk? Because you always have a chance at profits. Okay, that's the deal. It's just what's the probability in the long term. The point being is, could you go long fixed income right here? Of course you could. Okay, of course you could. But I would like to wait for a retest of that channel line. Okay, I'd like to wait on a pullback from when we were at 105.27 up to 108.25, almost a three-point acceleration. I'd like to see a little bit of a pullback. Now, where things get interesting is... Let's put things on an hourly. Okay, and let's just go from the acceleration we had, which was basically last week. Okay, there's Wednesday's Fed Day. There's Friday's jobs number. As I mentioned, you gave the whole jobs number up. Okay, but backing things out, just on a Fibonacci basis, let's see what type of a pullback we correlate to. Now, here's what's cool. This trend line is going down to the right. If it takes long enough, maybe we'll get a pullback to about the 107 price point, which would also be a 618 pullback of the move higher. Now, in my opinion, that's a much nicer setup than just buying them right here. You could have bought them right here, too. Where do you buy them? Well, that's what I'm talking about when you say, you know what? It's hitting the line. It's a possible test. It's back to a 618. That's a scenario that in the long run I really like. Maybe I'm missing out on some profits by not putting a little money at risk. Set my stop underneath it, okay? Because guess what, folks? The data is going to determine everything. And yes, there's a very real chance that the data determines that inflation is not under control and the Fed needs to hike even further to make sure we get things under control. However, combining what the chairman said, combining where yields are, combining that we basically hit 5% on the 10-year, we've now pulled back to almost 46 okay? I am looking for an ideal setup for potentially that 10 year coming back to test the channel line, brings you back to a 618 of the trend we had from last week, and then possibly what do we get? And then maybe there's the buy. I know to our man Bud Rolfs, love Bud Rolfs, miss him tremendously. He was the channel master at TFNN, folks. And boy, so often, right? You break out of the channel, that's not the buy. What's the buy? The buy is the retest. Well, let's see if we get a retest, right? On a daily, you got no test at all. That was a solid break out of that channel. Now we've pulled back a bit. 
Uh, the interesting thing, though, is when you do put it on a 10-minute chart, this is a daily going back, though, so I, I like to keep it on the daily here. You did break out barely, but this channel is so well-defined for a period of, what, six months now? that on a daily basis, I would like to see that get retest. And you've seen, we've broken out, of it, broken out of it before. And what happened? You came down to the test, nope, and blew right through that line. And that was when it trading from 110.31, almost 111 to 105. Always put your stops in place, folks. If you go back to where we were on September 1st, and I told you that the yield on the 10-year was gonna rise to above 5%, within two months, what would you have told me? What kind of money would you have put in place? Yeah, it would have been a rich one, to put it lightly. What do we got here? Making sure I don't... Okay. Uh, okay. Where are we jumping to next? Well, let's jump to Mr. Kashkari. So he was out there on Bloomberg this morning. Um, and this is kind of where... And we talked about poker yesterday, and they were talking about game theory, GTO. Game theory, optimal play. Okay. The game theory of being a Fed official is to be as hawkish as possible in this scenario because you don't need to hike if the market thinks you're going to hike. That's the best part of it, right? And so it would make sense that there should be some strong rhetoric which can make sure that the market doesn't ease conditions that actually undo some of the tightening in place. So that makes sense. So, so. Remember that in terms of the messaging versus what actually is going to happen if inflation rolls over and we really get weakness in the economy. Uh, we've got to get inflation down. That's the number one thing. Well, here's what I found myself thinking as I was listening to this this morning and reading through it. Chairman Powell said that the risks now outweigh are greater in hiking than the risks in not hiking. He doesn't think it's the number one thing, right? These are the, the, just the way I'm thinking about it. Now, that is uh, Austin Goolsby, excuse me, saying this is we have two Fed officials. We're going to get to Kashkari. That was Goolsby. I'm absolutely hammering. That's what we should be watching. Of course, that's what we should be watching, right? But we should also be watching a weak economy. We should be watching some weak job gains in the market last for the month of October. 150,000 jobs added, but you had revisions of 100,000 plus. So that all ties in. Kashkari. Ultimately, the economy will tell us how much is needed to get there. That's an obvious statement. Uh, they need to bring down, bring prices down in a reasonable period of time. We get back, folks. Stay tuned. We'll be back in three minutes. Tigers. Every Tuesday and Thursday, Tim Moore joins the Tom O'Brien Show to share his unique insight that he's developed over decades of trading. Now, on Tuesday, November 7th, from 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Tim Ord will be hosting his own live webinar. Tim's analysis has been outperforming market returns by almost double, and his gold analysis is on track to be a winner as well. Tim will be delving into six secret ratios that every trader should know. In this webinar, Tim will be covering the daily TLT VIX, the daily and weekly SPY VIX, the American Association of Individual Investors bull bear ratios, and the trend panic levels. Tim will break down each ratio, how it is calculated, its importance, and how it can help you make bigger returns. It's as simple as this. Learn the ratios, trade by them, and see your returns. That's it. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up now. TFNN. Educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. 
the Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got a little bit of weakness to kick off the trading session with the S&Ps off by nine points right now. NASDAQ 100 hanging on to gains by 20. Dow off by 50 points right now. We'll call it in the Russell. Russell volatility, man. Russell off a of full percent off 17 points. We check in on crude. It's continuing to drop. How about a 78 handle in the price of crude? Gold contract. 1969. We were down to 1962. Some volatility on gold. If you haven't checked out the gold report, folks, my dad's weekly newsletter. Check that out. But today... Our man Tim Ord, he's got a webinar coming up tonight from 4 till 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, folks. The six secret ratios every trader should know with Tim Ord, 4 p.m. till 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time today. The ratios he's going to be talking about here, the TLT VIX, the SPY VIX, both of those on a daily, the weekly SPX VIX, the daily VVIX VIX, the American Association of Individual Investors bull bear ratio, and then your trend panic levels. It's 90 minutes. He's going to break down each, each ratio, show you how he calculates it, show you how to understand it. Most importantly, show you how to trade off it. Uh, Tim's had some great calls. He's on the program with my dad every Tuesday and Thursday. I believe he's going to be on the program with him this afternoon prior to the 4 p.m. Eastern time start. We got some great signups for the webinar, so we should have a good crowd in there as well. It's $149 for the 90-minute live webinar with Tim talking the six secret ratios every trader should know, and that's today at 4 o'clock. Don't miss it. I plan on being in there, uh, and it will be archived. This is the type of webinar that you're going to want to go over at least more than once at least a couple times, right? When you're looking at six different ratios, understanding what they mean, it'll always be available on your members page, folks, okay? You can watch as many times as you want. You buy something like this, it's not recurring. You're not signing up for anything else. It's 149 back bucks. You get 90 minutes live in there. He'll answer questions, he'll go over the six of them. And that's tonight at four o'clock. And don't wait till the last second, okay? Because we have to tag you in the Tiger's Den room just to give you access to the room. If you're not in the den, we just have to get you in there. That takes only about five minutes or so. But don't wait till the end of the day. Sign up, get your spot reserved, and get in there at 4 o'clock today with Tim Ward. Uh, six secret ratios. I'm looking forward to that one. All right. S&P is off by seven right now. We have the gold contract off by 19. We check in on the dollar index right now. Dollar index trading higher at 105.70. Let's check in on some of the companies with their numbers. Uber. Yeah, Kevin had a great trade. I think it was an iron condor yesterday on fast market on Uber. And what do you want when you're placing an iron condor? You basically want no price movement because you're absorbing the premium in terms of where this stock can go. And you always like to see it moving 60 pennies when you're putting an iron condor on there. So they had a great trade. We'll see how that goes throughout the day. But Uber out with their numbers. And uh, let's see. I had that article pulled up. Where are we? Here we are. Yeah, so a little bit of a mixed story. Third quarter results that missed expectations, okay, but 
revenue for the quarter up 11% year over year, $9.3 billion. Uh, the, talk, the CEO, of course, talking about uh, the third quarter was very strong. I think he's on Bloomberg this afternoon at 12 or 12.30. So look for some potential volatility on Uber as their CEO gets out there at 12, 12.30 with a little bit of a PR spin. I'm sure that might not be the only place he's out, but that's where he'll be at least at noon Eastern time, I think, on Bloomberg or 12.30 potentially. Earnings, they miss by two pennies, 10 versus 12 cents. They miss on revenue as well. But the market doesn't seem too worried with the reaction. Um, net income of 221 million compared with a net loss of 1.2 billion. The company is transitioning to profitability, which the market has liked. I mean, check out this acceleration it's had. Look at this, right? From 19 bucks a little more than a year ago, from what, 22 bucks last October to beginning of the year at 24. That's a double bagger, trading at 48 right now, quite the acceleration last week. But yeah, that's what happens when a company goes from losing money to making money. A very strong third quarter, accelerations in the company's gross bookings, trips, and monthly active platform consumers. The platform is seeing the continued benefits of consumer shifting spending from retail to services. These results demonstrate that Uber continues to drive profitable growth at scale and why we believe we're well positioned for the journey ahead. EBITDA of 1.09 billion, 576 million year over year. Gross bookings up 31% year over year and delivery up 18%. Mobility, okay, so mobility gross bookings up 31% to 17.9. You know, I've talked about this many times, man. The Uber business model for driving cars for mobility, that segment, 5.07 billion in revenue. The delivery segment, 2.93 billion. Okay, they have a freight business that books 1.28 billion. How about that, right? I remember when they were starting all this stuff, man. There's a big difference right now, in my opinion, with luxury purchases when it comes to the gig economy. I got food delivered on Sunday from KFC. Okay, I don't need a lot of KFC. They wanted KFC in the household. It was Sunday. We had just gotten back from vacation on Saturday. I did not plan on going out. We were relaxing, right? So that's okay. You guys want Kentucky Fried Chicken, man? I'll order you guys some Kentucky Fried Chicken, okay? They wanted some mashed potatoes and gravy, some chicken, uh, mac and cheese for the kids. We order it. $66 was the total price of a KFC order. $66, and I'm telling you, okay, it was a family order, but it wasn't anything crazy, and I'm talking about Kentucky Fried Chicken when it feels like I should be going to Chili's for $66 or something like that, right? What happens? Food shows up. No gravy. No gravy, and there were like three orders of mashed potatoes. Well, that can't happen, right? So I try and contact the driver. No, the driver's not picking up. He's not picking up. He knows that any customer that calls him back after they drop off a food order, that's a problem. So they don't pick it up. So what do I do? I cancel their tip, okay? It wasn't his fault, but he's got to pick up, man. Because 66 bucks, I think I tipped the guy 20% or something like that. Judge if you want, man, okay? But that's part of the deal, okay? Pick up the phone. The order was wrong. The whole point we got it was for a bunch of mashed potatoes in the house. That's what they wanted with some chicken and some stuff for the kids, mac and cheese for the kids. It's a long story, okay? But then what happens? So it's, this is crazy, man. What can we do? So I had to place another order, and I ordered one order of mashed potatoes and three sides of gravy. Make sure we had it, right? Okay. Well, the good thing is each of these orders takes about 15 or 20 minutes. That's the real deal. So they pick up the second order. They bring it to the house. What happens? I bring the bag into the house. One of those gravies spilled all over everything. Yeah, so everything's covered in gravy. One of my extra gravies is now gone. Thankfully, I ordered one ma one great one mashed potato that came with its own gravy, and I had an extra gravy. So we got two big gravies. That did the job. Point being, folks, it was stupid expensive, and I choose my words wisely, stupid expensive, uh, and a very unfortunate experience, okay? Now, that was Kentucky Fried Chicken's fault. But the service and the inability for it to be uh, wrong to be made right when I'm spending 66 bucks to order KFC, okay, that food delivery business is going to be a tough one, man. It's going to be a tough one going forward because people's spending is strained. And that is a huge luxury that I feel like people are going to get in their car and go pick it up at like a Chipotle drive-thru as opposed to paying for Uber Eats to deliver that food, DoorDash, et cetera. 
And you know what? You look at the chart of DoorDash, and I don't know. I was going to say it's not as strong, but man, that's a double bagger from where it started the year as well. But keep that one in mind, man. You know, you got to take a car to the airport, you take an Uber. Food delivery, though, every time I order Uber Eats, man, I just feel like I'm getting taken to the cleaners, for lack of a better term. All right, folks, one more segment. Don't forget about Tim Ward's webinar. We got a three minute break. Head to the front page of TFNN. You can sign up by the time I'm back, four o'clock today. We got one more segment. Don't go away, folks. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the US futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps off by about five points right now. NASDAQ 100, the only index in the positive, up by 42 points. NASDAQ as well, but NASDAQ in the positive. Dow off 46. Russell off by nine. We jump over to Disney shares. So Disney, uh, with their numbers tomorrow, you're looking at about a 5% move priced into their earnings event in either direction. you got about a $4.81 move in either direction. You're trading at 84.13 right now. We jump to Disney in terms of what they have fundamentally going on. they got a new movie, The Marvels. Boy, it's interesting to see if uh, the world, the country or the world has been a little bit exhausted with the Marvels. 33rd film. Can't believe that. I've never really gotten into any of these that much. Um, but the Disney studio turned its cinematic universe into a series of Hollywood blockbusters that have made billions of dollars with the Marvels. Viewer, may, viewers may finally be fatigued. Now, this is a sequel to 
Captain Marvel, which was in 2019, starring Brie Larson, that made more than a billion dollars at the box office. But The Marvels, which comes out November 10th, it's the 33rd film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, MCU is as they call it. Opening weekend is expected to pull in less than half of the $153 million in ticket sales Captain Marvel did. It cost $200 million to make. Uh, that's going to be a problem, man. They acquired Marvel in 2009 for $4 billion. So, yeah, they've made the most of that opportunity. Um, but I've talked about this before. If you're looking for some big Disney films coming down the line, folks, you can Google it yourself in terms of the movies, the production schedule. Late 2025 almost. We're almost in 2024. You push it out to 2005, excuse me, 2005, 2025, 2026. That's where you're getting, like, two Star Wars movies in one year, one Star Wars movie in the next year, uh, two Avatar movies around that time. Haven't seen a Star Wars movie, I think, since 2019, and you're going to get three of them over the course of about two years in that period of time frame. And guess what? I don't think anyone's going to be tired of Star Wars when you haven't seen a movie in about four years. All right, folks, thanks so much for starting your trading day here. Stay tuned. Basil Chapman's up next. Don't forget, Tim Ward, tonight, 4 o'clock, the six secret ratios every trader should know. Check that out on the front page of TFNN. We got markets pretty calm. S&P's off by two. Stay tuned, folks. Basil's up next. Thanks so much. Have a great Tuesday.